Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to work back and forth between Illustrator and Photoshop now. This is kind of an advanced technique, so you want to make sure you're kind of familiar with both programs before you start playing around with this. And we're basically going to link files back and forth between Photoshop and Illustrator and use components of both programs to do things. I'm going to show you kind of my working method, how I do this with a... I use um, Photoshop and Illustrator to create digital illustrations, for example. Uh, this guy uh, is a model for a character I use named, uh, I've created named Heavy Man. So I'm going to use this photo as a background. And the first thing you want to do is just take a photo in Photoshop, bring it in, edit it, place it the way you want to in the page. Um, you can go ahead and clean up the background if you want to and that kind of thing. I'm not going to really mess with that right now. Um, but go ahead and set it up the way you want. I like to keep elements of the photo in my illustration, so I tend to keep some parts of it and delete others with the eraser and stuff like that. But once you have that set, you want to go ahead and save it. You can go to File, Save As, and you want to make sure that you have a clean, clear folder structure for this because uh, you're going to be linking back and forth and you don't want to lose files. So here I have my stuff organized. I have a clearly labeled folder I'm putting it in and I'm going to keep all of those components together in this one folder. So you want to go ahead and save it, make sure it's all set and ready. Then you want to go ahead and open up Illustrator, and I'm working at 8.5 by 11, you want to set your art bar to up at whatever size you want, and make sure you have a layer created that's unlocked, so make sure you've created a layer, and then just go to File, Place. What we're going to do is we're going to tell it to place that Photoshop file that we have right here, we're going to tell it to place that into our um, Illustrator image. So right now you can see up here there's like a, an option for embedding that, or edit the original. And we do not want to embed. We always want to make sure we keep the edit original. Um, uh, we want to be, be able to make sure we can always do that. So if I go ahead and just place this thing now, I've got it all put in there. I'm ready to roll. Um, now what I can do is I can use the tools that Illustrator gives me to draw and um, kind of create more of a, a little bit more of a comic book looking illustration. So I've already done this as kind of pre-baked, but I used a uh, Wacom tablet to go ahead and go in here and just kind of like use this image to sort of trace over the photo and draw my character here like kind of I'm making him as like kind of a sad sack Batman character so it's called heavy Batman so you can see how I use the photo underneath to kind of track certain parts of it I've shifted some things a little bit but basically it gives me the image that I want with uh, nice clean vector based lines so um, I'll come in here and show you more stuff about the stars later but so I've kind of gone ahead and like just used this as my base for the line work. If I want to add color now, though, and I want it to be something that looks a little more gestural and not so flat like Illustrator often does, um, I would want to go ahead and go back into Photoshop now. So I would want to go ahead and save this. So I want to go ahead and save this file, the Heavy Batman file. And it's saving it already, and I'm saving it in the same folder where I saved my Photoshop file. And I'm just going to click back over here on Photoshop, and I'm going to go ahead and... Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer here, right? And I'm going to make, make sure that layer is uh, kind of on top of the photo that I have here. And I'm going to go ahead and just place this. So I'm going to go to File. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to File, and then I'm going to go Placed Linked. So I want to make sure I'm linking this file and not embedding it. So I'm going to place the linked file. And I'm going to go ahead and just place the Illustrator file in there. So when I place this now and I click OK, it will place it into Illustrator for me, but I can go back into Photoshop and alter it, and it'll alter the way I'm viewing these files in both places. So you can see that it's placed it into the image, um, it looks like it looked in Illustrator, so if I switch back over here to Illustrator, this is the view I have in Illustrator, and that's what it's giving me in Photoshop. So it's not showing me the photo underneath. It's just giving me the, um, the Illustrator, whatever is visible in Illustrator right now, however I saved it. Okay, so if I go ahead and I turn off this, um, the photo that I started with, oh, I'm sorry, you have to go ahead and make sure you place this, so hit Enter to place it, so make sure that it's placed and uh, rendered. If I go in here and I turn off that photo underneath, you can see that now I just kind of have a the, the line illustration. And in here underneath this, I've gone ahead and built a whole bunch of 
layers to kind of give my illustration a little bit of a look of um, uh, with different sort of techniques. So um, if you look at layer, if I go ahead and close, twirl this up and turn that off, you can see that this layer is just a little bit out of alignment. So I'm going to go ahead and use the nudge tool up here, the move tool. I'm just going to nudge the lines down so that they kind of line up precisely the way I want them to. So I drew the line work that you see here in Illustrator, and then this stuff is done in Photoshop. So if I click on this group that I have, you can kind of see how I've built this, this image up. So I'll just click through these one layer at a time and talk, talk, talk you through it. So I'm using the, the Photoshop um, sort of paint tools now to go in there, and I'm going in, and uh, so this gives me a white background layer, which helps me see what's going on. And then in layer four here, I've just kind of tried to select these pants so that they look a little bit more like the kind of docker pants I think this character would work. And I just painted those in with a brush. So I just painted those on. I added some sort of bluish gray cape color because it's got to be that way for Batman, right? Um, I added in some sort of fleshy tone for this this guy. I added in um, some highlights on that. So these are some highlights that I added with, that are just kind of reddish pink that go over the top of that um, kind of, you know, pasty white skin that he has. I went ahead and added in the brown shoes just to try and bring those out a little bit. I added in the blue shirt because Heavy Man's one of his characteristics is he always wears a blue shirt. And then I uh, also added in a whole bunch of like kind of gray um, brush marks. So if I turn off the line work here, you can kind of see how I went in there with um, the brush tool. And uh, where's that at? So I went in with a brush tool and I selected different kinds of brushes and kind of tried to make it look like charcoal. So I used a Wacom tablet for all of this. And this would just be like the base color that's underneath it. Um, got a whole bunch of different layers that are, um, again, kind of piled up on top of each other so that they all kind of show through. And, uh, you know, so here is what he looks like with the line work and here's what he looks like without. You can kind of bring the line work in either layer. So then the last thing I want to do is I want to try to pop him out of a background, like kind of a gray background. So I put in this layer 9, and if you look at the opacity on that, it's only at 20%. So if I crank up the opacity on this, it basically looks black. But when you take a layer like this and you crank it down to like 20, <clears throat> what I do is I take my eraser tool and a pretty big, nice big brush that I increase the size of and I make sure it's got a nice fuzzy edge on it. And then I change the flow of my uh, eraser down. I can go in there and just kind of like basically really slowly kind of pop highlights out of there. I can change the brush, brush size. I can do different things to kind of bring out highlights on the figure. And then I add a second layer over the top of that, another black layer with the opacity cranked way down. If I wanted to, I could kind of create a little vignette kind of a look here where there's, it gets lighter. Um, but all of this stuff, these things are basically just two black layers that I use the eraser to kind of go in and pop highlights out. I like to think of it the way you would use charcoal in a charcoal drawing. If you covered your paper with gray charcoal and then use the eraser to sort of pull the highlights out. So once I've done all of that, I can go ahead and uh, turn the line work back on. That gives me a pretty good look at what this thing looks like, right? So this gives me a nice strong look of what it looks like. If I want to, I could turn the photographic stuff back on as well. You can see how that alters everything. So I'd want to go back in and uh, probably erase a whole bunch of stuff out of this image. I'd want to go in there and lighten it up um, if I wanted to leave the photographic information also visible. But it just gives me kind of a nice clean look um, that involves incorporates things that are good for Photoshop and Illustrator. So if those are um, kind of easy techniques, what I want to do is once I get this to look exactly the way I want it to look in Photoshop. I just save it, so I make sure I hit the Save button. Um, and it should, it'll save it exactly in this state back to the folder. And then I can go into Illustrator, and you can see here it's asking me that I've modified some of the links in the link panel. Would I like to update them now? I can say yes. And that's going to give me the look that I'm looking for when I go down to layer 2 where I've placed that Photoshop file. Now you can see I actually have a representation of what my image looked like. Um, if I want to, I can go to Photoshop here and I can turn off the line work that's been kind of imported in. So all I get is this stuff. Save that. 
And I can go back to Illustrator. And it's going to ask me if I want to update it, and I could say yes. And then, then I can dump my original vector-based line work back over the top of it, and I end up with an image that looks a little bit more like this, with nice, clean vector-based lines here, and uh, then the Photoshop illustration that's underneath. So this, I know it's a little complicated, but you can kind of bounce back and forth between the two things, using the tools for what they're best for. I really love the way that I can incorporate the Photoshop kind of this sort of paint-like effect, so they make this look real crinkly and everything alongside these line-based um, illustrations. And I love the way that these two things allow me to kind of bring Photoshop back and forth um, and add, you know, different components from different places. So um, I'll follow up with another tutorial next about how to add type and text and things like that. So, But for now, hopefully this is a little bit helpful as you think about using the two programs together.